In your work, The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles, you write about how a scientific epiphany resulted in an instantaneous personal transformation. What insight did you have, Bruce? Well, a little bit of a background before that epiphany. I was uh, teaching at a medical school. I was a professor and teaching basic science about the nature of cells and how they work. And giving the students the conventional spiel about uh, DNA and genes controlling our lives and that our traits and uh, characteristics are somewhat predetermined in our heredity, et cetera. And while I was doing that, I was um, uh, experimenting and uh, with muscular dystrophy research, and I was growing stem cells and tissue culture. And, and this is uh, just to get people a, a time frame here. This was 40 years ago. There were not many stem people, stem cell people at that time. And uh, I had the option or opportunity of learning how to do stem cell cultures, and I would put a single cell into a petri dish, a single stem cell, which is the equivalent like an embryonic cell. It doesn't have a fate assigned to it yet. And I would put it in a tissue culture dish and grow them. And the significance is that the cells would divide uh, every 10 hours about. So I'd put one cell in a petri dish, and 10 hours later it would be two cells, and 10 hours after that, four, and they would double, eight, 16, 32. In a short time, I'd have thousands of cells in the petri dish, and all cells were genetically identical because they came from the same parent. But then what i do is split the population up into three three different Petri dishes. So i just take genetically identical cells and put them in three different dishes, and i change the environment. Uh, in the case of cells, that would be the equivalent of culture media. Uh, the constituents of the environment uh, in the, each of three of the different dishes, so I had three different environments. In one dish, the cells form muscle. In one dish, they form bone. In the third dish, they form fat cells. And, and it's just like you don't have to be too much of a rocket engineer to figure this one out. The question is, well, what controls the fate of the cells? Well, I'm teaching genes control the fate of the cells, but here's an experiment where all the cells were genetically identical, and yet their fate, whether it was muscle, bone, or fat, wasn't based on their genetics. It was based on their response to the environment. And so all of a sudden it said, no, the genes didn't control the fate of the cells. It's the environment that influenced the fate of the cells. And, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Here I am teaching genes control life, and yet the cells are revealing. No, life was controlled by the environment the cells found themselves in. So my research was then trying to figure out, well, how does a cell do this? Because I'm teaching genes control life, and apparently there's a control that's other than the genes. And basically, what my research led to was an understanding that the skin of the cell, the membrane of the cell, which is equivalent of our skin, uh, was the, is the actual brain, that the cell was responding to environmental signals picked up by receptors in the skin and then adjusting the biology to match the environment. And, and the parallels here is that a human is uh, the same as a cell in the sense of biology. Our skin is actually the source of our brain. And it's so basically the cells and humans adjust their biology by how they perceive the environment. Mm -hmm. So basically what I recognize is how we perceive the environment, how we see the world determines our genetics. Well, this is now a new field of biology called epigenetics. Uh, what almost everybody in the audience has been programmed with and what I was teaching was something called genetic control, which means control by genes. You tell me about a characteristic and I'll say, yeah, there are genes that control that trait. And so science has been focusing on identifying the genes. The new science is called not genetic control, it's called epigenetic control. And this is a profound difference because epi means in Latin above. So I, I say the word epidermis. That means above the dermis, that's the skin. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I say epigenetic control, literally that says control above the genes. And that science uh, is what I saw 40 years ago, is that the control was not in the genes. The control was in the perception, how the cell sees the world, and that's how it adjusts the genes. And the same thing occurs in our body, that the cells that make up our body, 50 trillion of them about, their fate is determined uh, in the same way, how we see the environment. And so where the skin of the cell was reading the environment, this is the same with ours. Our, consider our, our skin is our eyes, our nose, our taste buds, our touch receptors, pain, pressure, all these receptors that read the environment are built into our skin. So we're like the cell. The relevant difference and the profound difference was this, is that the story I was teaching, genes control life, genetic control makes us victims because we didn't pick the genes, we can't change mm -hmm. them, and they control
control our lives. The new science that the cells were revealing were called epigenetic control revealed the genes are potentials, but the, the nervous system of the cell, in this case the skin of the cell, reads the environment and then adjusts the potentials, adjusts the genes to fit. Mm -hmm. And that now applies in this new science called epigenetics to us. The cells that we have in our body, the genes that control their fate, are influenced by how we see the environment. So when I say genetic control, you're a victim because genes override you. When I say epigenetic control, it says, wait, you're a master because it's how you perceive the environment that adjusts your genes, which means if you change how you perceive the environment, you change your genes. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we become masters of our genetic fate, not victims of it. So the new science led me onto this path. And while I was getting onto this path and recognizing that, oh, the skin of the cell uh, is reading the environment just like our brain and nervous system reads our environment, and then the readings are converted into biology just like the readings which are picked up by our mind are converted into our biology, uh, I, I recognized something that blew me away because uh, here I am in the field of science because I'm, I didn't really believe in spirituality. I just thought, oh, look, it's just a biological machine, biochemicals and genes, and you put it together, and it's a machine we got here by accident, uh, genetics, etc. I'm teaching that as science, and then when I'm tracking down how the membrane works, the skin of the cell, I realize the thing that makes each human different from each other, why no two humans are the same in this regard, is that on the surface of our own cells, there are a set of antennas, like little miniature television antennas that pick up a broadcast. Uh, medicine studies a group of these, and, and medicine calls them self-receptors. Mm -hmm. And basically what it says is this, our cells are picking up an identity via these receptors, like your eye picks up light. The light isn't in your body, the light's from the outside. The eye picks up the signal and translates it into information in our brain, so we see things. Or our ears pick up a sound on the outside, but the, the nervous system converts it into a, a vibration in our brain that we can see things. So uh, basically, what, what this really is coming down to is that our thoughts and our beliefs about life are converted by our brain into chemistry that controls our cells. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that, and yet I also said, but each one of us is different. I said, but why are, why are two people different? It wasn't so much what's inside the cell, it's the antennas that are different on the outside. They're like a little combination lock. Mm -hmm. So my cells are receiving a broadcast on a set of antennas that no other human has the same set. Mm -hmm. You have a set of antennas on your cell receiving a broadcast like an identity that nobody else is receiving that set. Every person in the audience has their own set of antennas receiving their own equivalent of a station. And I said, well, where do the stations come from? Well, they come from the environment, which involves the invisible forces from the sun, the planets, and the universe, and everything. So it's a large invisible source. But what, the relevant that hit me at that moment, that epiphany moment, I stood there and looked at the nature of how the cell membrane worked as a nervous system, and I recognized that each human has a different identity because of a set of antennas, but the antennas are on the outside reading that identity, and I said, oh my God, my identity is not inside the cell, my identity is a broadcast coming into the cells, mm -hmm. and I realized, wait, I'm like a television set. My body is like this three-dimensional television set. I'm receiving a broadcast on these antennas, and I'm playing the Bruce show. And and then, like a television, <laughs> the, the analogy hit me and said, wait, if you're watching a TV show, and the picture tube breaks, and so the television, the image is gone, uh, you would say, the television's dead. And I said, yeah, like, the, well, the, the television's dead, but then the question is, if a television died, did the broadcast die? And the answer is, of course not. You can get another television, plug it in and turn it on, and when you tune it to the same station, mm -hmm. boom, it's back on the air. And what hit me was, I'm playing the Bruce Show. The Bruce Show is not inside of me. It's a broadcast coming in. And, and the significance about that was, I said, well, wait, then if my body dies, did the broadcast die? And the answer is no. And in fact... If a future embryo shows up with the same receptors that I happen to have on my cell today, that future individual will be downloading the same broadcast. Mm -hmm. I'd be back on air. And so 